All right, moving into our next contributor, we have Justin from Grid Plus, who is going to talk to us about how to advance the Ethereum community as a non-dev. So for all of those that are out there that are wondering like, well, how do I fit in? What am I supposed to do? This is the talk for you. So Justin, you ready? I'm ready. All right, man, take it away. Okay. Um so I'm Justin LaRue from uh, hardware and wallet manufacturer Grid Plus, and I'm not a developer. Um, but I do work full time in the space and I volunteered and contributed in other ways. So I kind of want to extend a welcome to the Ethereum community, um, to all the people who want to become part of it and get involved, who are also not technical like I am, um, and show the different paths that you can take. Um, so I'll share a little bit about my experience and I want to help point you in the right direction. It's not going to be an exhaustive talk. It's not a technical one. It should be just sort of a jumping off point uh, for additional things for everyone to consider if they want to get more involved. And you're already here watching these ETH Denver streams, so you're already on your way. So after all the wonderful technical talks this week, this is going to be a little bit more off the cuff. Uh, some might allege that means I'm a little underprepared, but I would say I want this to be conversational. Uh, so hit me with your questions on... Um, on Twitch, and I'll try and work in answers as I go. If I overlook anything or there's anything else you're curious about, let me know. So let's dig into it. So why is this important to me? Um, I became obsessed with Ethereum in 2016, and it was one of those things that seemed unrelated to my daily life and my background. Um, but it was really just captivating for me. So I kept finding ways to get involved. First, you know, going to a local meetup seemed like such a surreal thing. Um, and then it kind of grew from there. So what I do at Grid Plus is I do business development, I do marketing. With startups, you wear a ton of different hats. Um, but what actually kind of inspired this talk uh, was volunteer work of mine working on the ETH Boston Hackathon uh, from ETH Global. I was one of the local organizers that put it together. And when I initially got involved, um, you know, I didn't know what I was in for, uh, but you know, the people in this space are so welcoming. I didn't need to be nervous. And, you know, if you put in the time and effort, they're going to kind of pull you along by the hand. And I think you'll find how welcoming everybody is. So I had a friend who lived up the street from the venue for ETH Boston, which was in 2019. And he designed video games, but he wasn't a programmer. And he was like, oh, I love Ethereum. I read about it constantly, but like, I don't think this is for me. I'm not going to sign up. Uh, I finally convinced him to. I hope he's watching today. And um, a lot of un people that are amazing like him were unsure about whether these events are for them. And it absolutely was. So he was a little hesitant at first. I saw him during team formation. He's looking around. He seemed nervous. And then I barely saw him for the rest of the hackathon because he was so engrossed in what he was doing. Um, his background was in game design and, you know, balancing things in terms of game theory. So he found that he was a natural fit for other people that could implement his ideas on a technical level. And so I hope other people make that same leap and find how many opportunities there really are once you just start digging in. Because developers are the backbone of this space, um, but every successful team needs so much more. We need artists, web designers, translators, economists, writers, game designers, project managers especially, marketers, accountants, educators, people who can make video content, and just anybody who has a passion for this space, you can find a way to jump in. Chances are you have an existing skill today that is applicable. So uh, in Vitalik's talk at the beginning of ETH Denver, he referred to it as a duocracy. Um, it's a way of showing that you know your pedigree, your background, your affiliations, your education, it's not really what matters, it's what you accomplish. Uh, what you contribute. Um, and there are no born experts. There's no academic path that will guarantee you success working in Ethereum or the blockchain space in general. For me, um, you know, my prior obsession before Ethereum was music. And for me, I, what I see with Ethereum is like an extension of DIY subcultures, um, in particular ones where everyone contributed to something grassroots because that was all you had going on locally. You know, you didn't have um, 
MTV support for the kind of music that you liked. You didn't have press. So you did everything yourself. So I want to compare it to that a little bit. Um, all these music subcultures like uh, punk, early electronic music, hardcore, there weren't labels picking these people up. And there were people passionate about these things. It was deeply meaningful to them. So what's the solution? If you want this to work, you do it all yourself. You record your own music. You start your own label. Uh, distribute your own zine. Make your own t-shirts. Share your own flyers for shows you put on yourself. Um, this one in particular was um, from where I grew up, uh, near where I grew up in central Massachusetts, in kind of a rural area. And you know we weren't that far from Boston and New York. But it wasn't that exciting, so you had to make your own fun. You had to make your own art. Uh, and you know some of these bands that played in this high school gym years ago went on to tour the world. Um, because we all started out like this because they couldn't get booked at a real concert hall. So everything was done ourselves. Um, and I think Ethereum is sort of like a hyper-connected version of this facilitated by the internet, the collaborative tools we have now, and the nature of free open source software. Um, and that you don't have to be a developer to take advantage of that. It just lets people connect from everywhere. You don't have to be in a hub. So I think you know all metaphors are strained. Uh, for me, something that makes sense for um, you know the Ethereum ecosystem, I, I've thought of it as like a punk rock Silicon Valley. Everyone can have an impact. Um, your results are what matter. Your contributions matter. Um, but you don't have to be in the right city. You don't have to have an expensive office, corporate funding. Anyone can jump in. Um, so I like this metaphor. You know. It's about sort of just digging in and having an impact right away without having to go through existing channels because we're making this as we go. Um, so I like to think of how I got involved personally as the Kramer method. And this is another metaphor like pre-internet music that uh, betrays my age. Um, but I think of this particular Seinfeld episode where Kramer shows up uh, at an office building and he sneaks in to use the bathroom. And then everyone just assumes he works there and he keeps showing up until it's finally revealed he doesn't know what he's doing and his briefcase is just filled with crackers. Um, but that was sort of my approach to how I got involved. Um, I found this Project Grid Plus. I loved it. I was fascinated by it and I wanted to read everything and I just kept showing up every day and I never left. Eventually, I pitched the team on hiring me and it was a natural fit because I was probably the person who was most familiar with what these guys were building. And all these super technical people, they weren't necessarily the ones who were most adept at explaining this to external parties. They were used to speaking to a developer audience. Um, so, And also, as they transitioned from a technical endeavor to a consumer-facing one, there are so many more roles that are necessary to support this. Um, so this was, aside from getting involved in volunteering at hack hackathons, or as ETH Denver likes to be called, a bit-a-thon, um, this was sort of how I just sort of showed up every day and got involved. And I see a similar path for so many people who transition from being occasional Reddit posters to Ethereum being the focus of their professional lives. So enough about me. Where do you dig in? First thing is just try everything about it. I try everything. Don't read about it. Don't just think about it. Try it. Um, you know, all these big Twitter accounts that talk about cryptocurrency and act like they're experts, most of them will reveal that they don't really know that much about what they're talking about. They're just big content generators. And if you actually try everything, you'll see what works, what doesn't, and you'll learn where to dig in. Uh, and it'll just be sort of evident. Um, so if you're an artist, dig into the NFT space. Have a portfolio on deck. Just find what you're passionate about. Get involved in those communities. And don't be a wallflower. Speak. Ask questions. Share what you learn. And sharing what you learn, I think, is the most important thing here. I'm going to harp at that a little bit. Um, Ethereum, one thing that's wonderful and unique about this community is the positive sum mindset. It's not about hoarding information for yourself uh, to gain some sort of advantage. You know, there's so much work to do that ultimately um, you just share what you learn as you go 
And there's always going to be new things to dig in on, new ways that what you're doing is unique. So always help others, bring them into the fold, and we can help grow this a collective endeavor. Um, so get involved, join these communities, and volunteering, I think, is just one of the most important things. And so now we're in you know, the era of COVID for a little bit longer. So you might not be going to hackathons and conferences, but there are all kinds of other ways you can jump into non-technical endeavors. Um, you can contribute to ethereum.org, which is open source. You can contribute to uh, information like uh, information resources like ETHUB. These are open source. Anyone can write. Anyone can jump in. So I think this is actually the most important thing, self-publishing. Um, for many people I know, you know, an insightful medium or Reddit post uh, is sort of what opened all of these doors for them just getting their thoughts and their perspective out there. I know one in particular, um, a friend, Jake Franick, from, uh, went on to be one of the people that ran Coinmetrics, and it started with a single blog post with his on-chain analysis that sparked a lot of conversations. Um, and you see a similar path everywhere. Uh, a few years ago, I noticed this sort of predominant Twitter narrative that no one can run an Ethereum node. And I thought to myself, well, I'm running two at home. I'm not a very technical person. I've got parody and geth nodes, so I'll write about that. And I wrote kind of like a lighthearted medium post about the topic. And now, like a year and a half later, it's still getting tons of views. I've gone on to be invited to speak uh, further about this and do subsequent pieces. Um, so share what you know, uh, what you care about and what you're doing. Don't worry about the audience fit. If you're passionate about it, someone else out there is interested. Um, and I'm not a particularly technical person, and I think in a way that's kind of ideal, because if you want to speak to a broad audience, you know, it, it's good for them to be able to relate and understand, and someone non-technical can probably explain things better than an engineer, um, because they don't see that user experience, they don't see the frustrations and everything else that comes with it. Um, and, you know, the other thing is there's just so much noise in this space. Um, about investing and trading, just share your practical knowledge that you've gained along the way. If you're unsure about something, if you can't find a resource, it means someone else is looking for it. So do the same, just put it out there. It doesn't have to be a medium post. It can be getting involved in a Reddit community, a Discord, Twitter, um, whatever venue you can share useful information on. To that end though, if you wanna continue further, you know, self-publishing alone, it's not gonna pay the rent if you want this to become your career, but I would say before you start worrying about that, just start contributing and digging in before you worry about monetizing your efforts because whatever you share is gonna yield additional opportunities. Um, and the thing with that is, uh, you know, a lot of people, they kind of sit on the sidelines waiting to have this perfectly formulated idea, something they're doing in isolation, uh, but that's not where the magic happens in Ethereum, it happens through collaboration. Um, and one thing I'm going to touch on a little further next is uh, bounties, hackathons, and um, Gitcoin in particular is an excellent way for people of all sorts to get involved and even help fund your passion projects if they're of use to other people. So Gitcoin, um, this warrants several talks in and of itself, uh, but Gitcoin is a community built on Ethereum infrastructure to facilitate some funding for open source projects. Um, you can find bounties that are posted by teams already uh, for contributions, whether that be art, design, code, um, technical writing, translations. Um, but the other interesting thing is the community grant funding, which has become huge. And um, in that vein, if you are working on something that you're passionate about, uh, that you feel has utility for the space overall, um, apply for a grant. Get involved. Other people are probably going to be excited about what you're doing. And if they like it, they'll help funding you, even if you don't have a path for monetization, just because if it has value as a public good, um, it raises all boats. And again, I can't emphasize enough that the collaborative nature of Ethereum is really where the magic is. It's in the community. And we've seen all sorts of other projects with deep pockets try to replicate this through spending but it, it doesn't work that way. Um, you can't just buy an organic grassroots movement. So some examples that I think everyone should look at that I, I find inspiring and I think are really exciting. Um, everyone knows Uniswap. It's just this tremendous force uh, in the ecosystem now. Um, 
but you should go back and read Hayden's first post about his experience being a non-developer and just sort of hacking around on this after he lost his job, his first job out of college. It is absolutely essential reading. So he had a good network already. He knew Carl Florsch, who pushed him to experiment with smart contracts, make a website. Um, but you know, you also have the opportunity to plug into people through events like this. And uh, this network exists for everybody. Um, but he launched Uniswap to very little fanfare. People didn't really get it. It was a very simple implementation. He said he had 200 followers on Twitter at the time, and no one really cared. I was actually one of the first people to deploy a Uniswap V1 contract for the grid token. And at the time, it seemed like this weird esoteric thing. Um, I didn't quite get how AMMs worked, but I tried it. Um, and that experience was valuable. And now it's sort of surreal that um, this little, you know, kind of homebrew project has grown into something that uh, is doing more volume than massive centralized exchanges like you know, Gemini, Coinbase, and it's just really a testament to the power of Ethereum and what you can do with these tools. Um, another interesting one was Ethub, and uh, Eric Connor had tried a few things before. He and Anthony Sassano founded Ethub because they were basically sick of talking about the same things and typing them out over and over again on Twitter. And they're like, we just need a good reference for this. And they'd ask, you know, who has this material? What do we point people to? And there wasn't anything, so they built it. And they made it open source. Anyone can write. Anyone can contribute. Um, and it's also just ballooned into this huge thing for both of them with the podcast, additional content. And they've done a lot to um, help educate and provide reference material for people. And it's just another project that starts with a conversation, a small seed, something that you see is missing. And organically, because other people felt the same way or were looking for the same thing, it grew to be so much more. So what's next? I can't emphasize enough, get involved now, talk to people, uh, put yourself out there. Uh, I always see at in-person hackathons, there's sort of um, people milling about on the sides, you know, it's hard to go and introduce yourself right now in the current climate, you know, a virtual events make that a little bit easier. Um, so get involved, don't just think about it. Don't think about this perfect idea you might put out someday, share your ideas, contribute a little bit, talk with people, it's the most important thing. And if you're watching this, you're already on that path. Collaborate, um, community and pitching in is just, the most important thing, and that's where your small efforts come together with those from others and real magic happens. Um, pitch in, be proactive, and contribute to projects you already love without the idea of like angling for a job or worrying about how you're gonna segue from what you're doing now to something new. Just put one foot in front of the other and you're gonna find it happens because there's so much opportunity, there's so much work to do uh, all these brilliant technical people, they need so much support to make their products thrive. Um, it's very rare that you can just put a technical tool out there and be wildly successful. Um, you've just got to you know, uh, have all these people supporting you, whether it's people writing about what you're doing, sharing this information, just there's so many ways to pitch in. Um, so to that end, I see some questions coming in on Twitch and I'm just checking the notes. Um, if anyone has any questions they want to pass up, I'll try and get to those now. Just checking on uh, how much time I have left. One minute remaining. Okay, skimming back. Um, there was one earlier about what does a project manager do in the Ethereum ecosystem? Uh, working with engineers, planning an organization and allowing people to just focus on their core competencies and what they do best that is so critical as a project grows. Um, I feel that's really important. And engineers, when they start out, they don't think about these support roles. Um, but it is so important to be able to let people focus on what they do best in their existing skill sets. Um, so yeah, absolutely, project managers, it's like it, it seems like a random bureaucratic thing, um, but it's so important. Any skill you have today, you can jump in there is a need for it. You just need to dig, start contributing, and you'll find out how. Um, any others I overlooked? I'm just checking on time. Yeah, we've got one asking about your Twitter handle. Did you share uh, that? Yeah. 
Yep, 0x midnight. One other interesting thing, I'm sharing that on the Twitch chat right now. Um, one other idea, don't be shy about putting your own name out there. I used to use all different pseudonyms, one on every platform, um, because I was really worried about um, you know, security, this being cryptocurrency, you know, putting my own name out there. It did get to be an issue when I started going to hackathons. I started getting more involved, and I had to explain I was Rock Lobster or Cool Pineapple or any one of these silly pseudonyms. It's fun, and there's nothing wrong with staying anonymous on Twitter. Um, that also affords you some cool opportunities. Um, but yeah, put your name out there. Um, I think that's actually useful. All right. I think I am good. Thanks so much for the opportunity. You are, good. you are good. Thank you for that. In fact, I'll just reiterate, this whole talk is really important to understand that crypto isn't just about developers. I mean, at some point, once the frameworks are built and standards are set and things are adopted, think five years into the future, most, I think most roles are going to be moving out of the technical world. I think most of it builds into the sort of application layer, product managers, I mean, I can't tell you how important product managers are when it comes to executing on a project, especially coming out of a hackathon. So I, I yeah, thank you very much for the insight and sharing that zero X midnight. <laughs> Thanks, John. And I also just want to say one last thing. I've been part of every ETH Denver, starting out as the wallflower, then watching the talks coming back every year. It's so cool to be a part of it and be on the other side. And I hope I see a lot of other people who are watching this for the first time today come back to me in a year and show me how they got involved. Please come say hi. Yeah, exactly. And so go to opolis.opolis.co. Um, that's the, the, the free job board utility for jobs in the space. He's absolutely right. You'd be surprised at how many designers and product managers and non-technical devs that are non-technicals that are needed in the space. Community leads. Oh my goodness. Like, yes. So come check it out. Thanks, Justin. All right. Thank you so much. You got it.